In the last video, we end up with talking about the central limit theorem and a short introduction in the, alter um, the null and alternative hypothesis. And I just want to clear this declaration up by giving you an example. You have an original population that you wanted to test with a certain variable on. And we don't know exactly the population distribution of a certain thing because nobody can ever actually gather the information of the population, as I said. So what we normally do on that is we, we gather samples and eventually we were able to make a sampling, as I said, a sampling distribution of the means of the sample. Just make sure that we're, we're clear on that. And the sampling distribution of the means of the sample is always going to be a normal curve unless unless the number of samples is less than 30. So make sure that we know it should be 30. So it would be a normal distribution. All right. And of course, as we know from the properties of the normal distribution, the highest probability would always be the mean. So let's just call this the original mean. Let's call that mu naught, which is corresponding to the h naught which is the, the original or the default mean of the samples. Now, let's say that we, that we applied a certain variable to this. Like we, we have a certain variable, let's call that uh, variable k, and we apply that to this, to this set of statistics. So in, in this case, the statistics are the means, right? So this thing is the mean of the means of the sample just to make sure that we understand that. And as I said again, fortunately, the means of the means of the sample is approximately equal to very, very, pretty much almost the same as the population of the mean, and that's why we can approximate the population of the mean. All right, now, when we apply this K, of course, there would be certain adjustments, adjustments to let's say we have a value of a statistic here which is which is also a mean let's call that mu i and we have a value of a statistic here which we, we call as mu i minus one and as we go further mu i mu i plus one all of those things all of these things would, would adjust according to how k would change this all right and now what we do is after we after we apply k so after we apply k we do another sampling distribution we do another sampling distribution and in that case that sampling distribution would, would result again to another normal curve because we understand that the sample distribution of the sample means is a normal curve and that would create a new value a new value of the mu and let's call that mu1. In that case, mu1 represents the change, right? The change. All right. Now, how would we test if this k has an effect? So, what we do is we try to look at if this mu1 still belongs, if this mu1 still belongs to this old distribution which is represented by mu naught. So let's call this sampling distribution uh, sampling distribution zero, which original and sampling distribution one. So does does this mu one still belong on this old sampling distribution x naught? Or how would we know that? How would we know if it still belongs on it? Alright, so the best way to know is we need to check if mu naught is equal to mu to mu one. All right, we need to check that, and this this thing actually corresponds to us accepting. I mean, pre-justifying that the null hypothesis is correct. Because if we said that mu is not changing, then we're saying that mu naught is equal to mu i. So this this statement corresponds to h naught.